Welcome to Two True Restaurant Horror Stories Animated, a series that will take you through the unsettling and spine-chilling experiences of diners and staff at eateries where the menu includes a side of terror. In these animated narratives, we delve into real-life accounts of sinister happenings in seemingly ordinary restaurants from ghostly encounters after closing hours to mysterious and malevolent patrons. Each story serves up a fresh course of fear. These are not tales of food gone wrong, but of nights that turned into nightmares, where the usual hum of conversation and clinking of dishes was overshadowed by something far more sinister. So, take your seat, dim the lights, and prepare to indulge in a feast of frights that will leave you questioning your next dining experience. Hey, my name is Andrew. While you may not know me personally, I'm quite recognized in the culinary world of my country. I've been featured as a judge on various reality shows and have made a name for myself, not as Andrew, but under a stage name I'd rather not disclose. I want to share a story that taught me a valuable lesson, hoping you might learn from my mistakes. I was one of the best chefs around, but as a teenager, cooking was the last thing on my mind. I loved being served, but never imagined myself behind the stove. That changed one fateful Tuesday night. After a terrifying encounter, I vowed never to eat out again or accept food from strangers. From that moment, I decided to prepare my own meals, ensuring my safety and quality of food. The day in question started oddly. I was rushing to meet my girlfriend for a meal when a car ran a red light and nearly hit me. The crash left me shaken but unharmed, a miracle considering the circumstances. The driver, a middle-aged man, was visibly upset and offered to compensate for the accident. I declined, attributing the incident to a simple accident and expressing my forgiveness. The man, grateful yet surprised by my leniency, thanked me and hurried off to his work. As my girlfriend and I wandered looking for a unique dining experience, our quest seemed fruitless with the usual fast food offerings. Then, as if by providence, we were invited to dine at an upscale, hidden gem known as the Feast. Intrigued and eager for something different, we entered through the indicated mysterious black door. Inside, the restaurant exuded an unusual charm. Dim lighting and soft music set a tranquil scene. But a nagging sense of unease bubbled within me. Something felt off, though I couldn't pinpoint exactly what. My girlfriend, oblivious to my discomfort, engaged in light conversation as we made our way through the peculiarly atmospheric establishment. At my girlfriend's reassurance, I began to relax and enjoy the evening. We were seated by the window, and a friendly waiter presented us with menus boasting an array of exquisite dishes. Opting for the familiar, I chose a steak, expecting a reliably good meal. As I ate, the restaurant's atmosphere continued to unsettle me. The patrons were older, their muted conversations filling the air with an odd sense of solemnity. There was no lively chatter or laughter, just murmurs and muffled words. My first bites of steak were delicious, but as I continued eating, the flavor intensified unusually. It became almost too much, bitter and unsettling. My girlfriend, too, noticed something off about her meal. Reacting with disgust and anger, she proposed confronting the chef. But the strange and seemingly dangerous atmosphere of the place urged me to dissuade her, asking her to wait until I finished my meal for reasons I couldn't quite understand then. Eventually, I stopped eating 
as the restaurant's atmosphere shifted ominously. The music ceased, and the murmurs fell silent. The patrons' stares grew more intense, filled with desperation and anxiety. I felt an overwhelming need to escape. But first, I decided to visit the restroom for a moment, to collect myself. The bathroom was unnaturally cold, and my reflection in the mirror revealed a pale, sweaty face with eyes filled with fear and confusion. As I prepared to return and insist on leaving, a customer suddenly grabbed my arm. I hadn't noticed his presence before. Had he been there all along? Or had I been too absorbed in my own thoughts? I demanded he let go, but his grip tightened. His eyes bore into mine, filled with a disturbing look of perversion, and he drooled uncontrollably. It was clear something was very wrong, and I needed to get out of there immediately. Overwhelmed by the man's sickening actions, I was powerless as he pinned me to the ground, choking me. In that terrifying moment, my girlfriend's cry for help from the restaurant pierced through the fear, granting me a surge of desperation. I managed to free myself with a knee to the man's groin and rushed out of the bathroom to find her. To my horror, all the restaurant patrons, previously fixated on my girlfriend, now turned their attention to me. They stood around with a disturbing obsession, mirroring the sick intent of the man in the bathroom. Just as they began to close in, a man, the chef, intervened. It was the same man who had nearly run me over earlier that day. His demand to the crowd was clear. I was to be let go. As he escorted us out, the man revealed a chilling truth. The restaurant catered to a very particular and affluent clientele who, once a year, indulged their most primal and grotesque instincts. He warned us never to return, hinting at the horrific special diet of his guests and suggesting we were intended as dessert. The realization hit me like a ton of bricks. I had unknowingly consumed human flesh, and the man in the bathroom intended to eat me alive. In a panic, my girlfriend and I fled, catching the waiter's smug smile as we left. Once safe at home, we debated contacting the police, but the absurdity and horror of our story made us hesitate. Would anyone believe such a grotesque tale? Would it even make sense to anyone else? That night's events have haunted me ever since. A gruesome memory of the macabre depths of human depravity and the dangers lurking behind the doors of the seemingly ordinary. It's a warning I now carry with me. Not all is as it seems and sometimes the most horrifying monsters wear human faces. Faced with the harrowing ordeal of nearly becoming a meal for affluent cannibals, my girlfriend and I chose silence over action. The thought of challenging a group of powerful millionaires with our incredible story felt insurmountable. We spent that night sickened, not just by what we had consumed, but by the close call with the fate too gruesome to fully comprehend. It's been years since that incident, and though we're still together, we've buried the memory deep, never discussing it, as if trying to erase the ghost of that night from our lives. In the aftermath, I've become distrustful, wary of eating anything I haven't prepared myself. The thought of unknowingly consuming human flesh again is unbearable. It's a burden I carry, a reminder of the dark capabilities of humanity and the importance of vigilance. As we continue with our stories, we are grateful for your support and engagement with our videos. Your likes and subscriptions help us grow and reach more people with these chilling tales. We're eager to hear from you about your favorite videos and stories and we aim to grow the SSG family 
to 100,000 members with your help. Thank you for being part of our journey. In another tale, growing up in a wealthy family often comes with misconceptions of perpetual luxury and indulgence. However, in my family, responsibility was paramount. My father, who began his business in the late 80s, built a chain of seven-star hotels worldwide. From a young age, my siblings and I were immersed in the family business, raised with middle-class values despite our wealth. Now in our 20s, my father has entrusted us with overseeing the hotels. I manage three major establishments in California, while my brothers take care of the East Coast and Europe, respectively. Recently, we acquired a new hotel in Texas, and I was tasked with integrating it into our chain. Excited about this new venture, I arrived to a warm welcome from the cooperative staff and settled into the room they had arranged for me. My role was straightforward, but little did I know what awaited me within the walls of this new acquisition. As I began to familiarize myself with the hotel, its history, and its staff, I was unaware of the eerie secrets and challenges that lurked in the shadows, ready to unfold in the most unexpected ways. As the preparations for the party neared completion, I was excited to celebrate the successful integration of the new hotel into our chain. However, when I chose the grand restaurant overlooking the fields as the venue, I noticed an unusual silence among the staff. Their uneasy body language hinted at something they weren't telling me, but I brushed it off, assuming it was just the pressure of organizing the event. The night before the party, I checked the venue and found it beautifully transformed, ready for the celebration. But the manager's smile seemed forced when I complimented his work, adding to the odd feeling surrounding the event. On the day of the party, I arrived at the restaurant to find it inexplicably redecorated as a wedding venue, with white and cream decorations, flowers, and an altar. It was completely different from what I had planned and confirmed the day before. I was bewildered, not only by the mistake, but by the potential embarrassment it could cause me in front of my family and business associates. In a race against time, I summoned the event planner and the manager, but to my frustration, the staff didn't seem surprised by the transformation. They exchanged glances, but offered no explanations. Their silence and apparent secrecy fueled my suspicion that they were hiding something. But with time running out, I couldn't afford to get lost in anger or accusations. I urged them to revert to the original party decorations as quickly as possible, hoping to salvage the event and maintain my reputation within the family business. As the staff scrambled to make the changes, I couldn't shake the feeling that there was more to the restaurant's mysterious transformation than met the eye. Shaken by the manager's revelation, the story of the bride's tragic death and the alleged haunting of the restaurant added an eerie layer to the events that had unfolded. As the party proceeded, I couldn't help but feel a sense of unease, knowing the restaurant's unsettling history However, I did my best to put on a cheerful front and ensure that my guests enjoyed themselves. The decorations remained intact throughout the event, and the atmosphere gradually shifted from tense to celebratory. After the party, I couldn't stop thinking about the manager's story. It left me wondering about the unexplained mysteries surrounding the hotel, the bride's tragic fate, and the eerie occurrences reported by the staff. Despite the unsettling experience, I returned to California with valuable lessons about the responsibilities of managing our family's hotels. I knew that I needed to be prepared for unexpected challenges 
and surprises. Even if they came in the form of ghostly tales and inexplicable phenomena, this experience served as a reminder that behind the glamorous exterior of our luxury hotels, there could be hidden stories and secrets that required careful handling. It was a lesson in humility and adaptability, traits that would prove essential in my journey to support and grow our family's business. The next morning, I woke up behind the open bar in the restaurant, still feeling groggy from the sleepless night I had spent waiting for the ghost bride. As I glanced around the restaurant, I was met with a sight that sent shivers down my spine. The entire place was once again adorned for a wedding, just as it had been on the previous days. But what unnerved me the most was the realization that I was dressed in a groom's attire, complete with a wedding band and ring on my finger. It was as though the ghost bride had chosen me as her groom for the spectral ceremony she endlessly reenacted. Fear and confusion gripped me as I struggled to comprehend the bizarre turn of events. I quickly removed the wedding attire and ring, feeling a sense of dread wash over me. It was clear that something inexplicable and otherworldly was occurring in that restaurant. I couldn't shake the feeling that I had unwittingly become a part of the ghostly ritual, and the boundary between the living and the supernatural had blurred in a way that defied rational explanation. It was a chilling experience that left me questioning the mysteries of the afterlife and the extent of the paranormal forces that may exist beyond our understanding. With a sense of urgency and a newfound respect for the stories shared by the hotel staff, I decided to leave the restaurant and return to my duties in California. The encounter with the ghost bride had left an indelible mark on me, serving as a haunting reminder there are realms of existence beyond our comprehension, where the past may linger and intermingle with the present in eerie and unsettling ways.